Hey there, gorgeous. Hope your Christmas was absolutely wonderful and that you are currently having a lovely day. I mean, you earned a great day, to be honest. Welcome to the quick review of a delightful little indie game by the name of Hadean Tactics, developed by Emberfish Games, a two-person development team. First off, Emberfish is a sick-ass studio name. Secondly, two people made this? Indie developers and their endless fucking creativity genuinely never stops impressing me. As described by their website, Hadean Tactics is a roguelike deck building game fused with auto battler elements, and I really couldn't say it better myself. I've heard others also remark that the game is set up in a way that is similar to Slay the Spire, which I sadly haven't had the chance to play yet, but to know that the deck building components remind people of such a well-beloved game is a good sign to say the least. And I do think that this game does a good job of making where you place your units important, rather than just a throwaway decision like poorer auto battlers. Speaking of a gameplay element, gameplay is set up like this. You select a pathway and you can look ahead and plan out the direction you want to go. There are a couple different event types ranging from your typical combat encounters to merchant shops and campfires to just sit, relax, and heal up a bit. And eventually your path will lead to a boss who you will Trump and then move on to the next area, rinse and repeat until you either win or lose. Combat encounters specifically go like this. You have a couple units to start on a grid-like board, and you can move them anywhere on your half of it. On the other half, uh, I voice cracked, no! On the other half, enemy units will have already been placed, and you can plan your placements accordingly. After you are happy with your unit placements, you then can plan out your cards. Now, each character in the game has a different set of cards, and entirely unique playstyles, and the cards you collect and earn throughout a playthrough will completely affect how you play the game, which leads to this fun feeling of building your deck during the game. You get to fashion your card deck into something unique each run, leading to a ridiculous amount of replayability. Cards can range from something as simple as giving your unit 75 shield, to something as ridiculous as dealing a monstrous amount of damage for each unit you have licked this turn. That was a joke, but you get what I mean. <laughs> as far as I'm aware, that isn't a real card. I don't think so. And then you click the big play button, and your units fight for about 10 seconds or so, and then you draw another hand from your deck. This was what made this game great to me. Rather than having the deck take a back seat to the auto battling, which was my fear for this game, your deck is front and center, not dick. Your deck. Your deck. Stop thinking about your deck. Your deck. Your deck is front and center. Do you understand? God damn it. You play some more cards, hopefully changing the tide of battle if it's going poorly or allowing you to snowball even more, and then rinse and repeat until you murder all of your enemies. That's your combat loop. That is the core of the game. If that sounds boring as shit to you, this is probably not for you. Otherwise, if you enjoy learning card mechanics and comboing them together and then getting to watch your units fight it out, this is a great fucking game for that itch. It's kind of like Magic the Gathering, but you can see your monsters and such actually fight. You get to witness the effects of the buffs and attacks viscerally. In terms of negatives I do have for this game, there are a couple. The loop can feel repetitive after a couple of hours. This is definitely not a game I can personally grind out for long amounts of time or anything. It's best instance. It's a, it's a sipping game, you know? Instead of taking a swig, you sip this game. And thanks to the RNG basis of a lot of the game, being that cards are found based on hidden die rules and units you can hire and such are on random rotation, you can sometimes have rounds that go incredibly quick because your RNG was just shit that round. And you can absolutely decimate because the RNG gods blessed you that round. While there are enough cards you earn that allow for many build types, this RNG system can sometimes sometimes lead to you having cards in your deck that don't really fit, which I personally don't like. It kind of stresses me out when I have a tight-knit deck but have one card out of place. <laughs> the way I think they could fix this is by giving lots of options in terms of places on the map. That would allow for you to maybe transform a card to a different card of your choice at a steep fee, like 50 to 100 gold coins. I did often find myself hoarding the in-game money and not using it as much as I think I should because I didn't really need more units in the later game. Being able to transform cards would add another use for our currency, as well as allow the deck building side of the game to really shine.
behind more and removing just enough RNG to help it not feel as overbearing as a middle school relationship. Because personally, I find deck building games to be all about having control of the situation at all times and being prepared for the worst outcomes, which RNG specifically pushes against that ideal. Adding more ways to remove some cards and get new ones would in general be good. And while the hero classes are great and they change a lot of how you play the game, there's only three of them at the moment. And after you unlock them, there isn't all that much to work towards other than achievements and maybe some class archetypes. This can lead to the game feeling a little pointless after you've dropped a lot of time into it. But as always, this is early access and they've already stated that more classes are coming. Other than that, the game is well polished, healthy in early and mid game content, has a cute art style and a deep card system with numerous mechanics and deck possibilities. Hadian Tactics is a a fantastic groundwork and this game has a beautiful future ahead of it i'm certain of that maybe not as beautiful as you are because well that's a fucking high ass bar but its future is bright and i'm excited to see the future classes they plan to drop later so should you buy hadian tactics well 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 if you love deck building, don't mind RNG based progression system, and enjoy auto battlers with more going on than Dota Underlords ever did. This game is a must buy. If you are interested because you played TFT one time but you have not been won over yet, it's only $18. That's a damn good deal for everything that's going on here, so I do still recommend it for you. If you aren't interested at all, in this game, uh, like a, like whatsoever, or its style, then thank you so fucking much for watching this through to the end, you sexy bitch. I hope you have a day as lovely as you. And if you enjoyed this video, just give that like button a little smack. And if you want to see more of my content, consider whining and dining the subscribe button down there. But most importantly, have a great day. And don't die. Mwah.